anyway, go story. All right. Story. Now, please. I want to talk about something that is uh, it's very dear to my heart. Um, and it's a story that says that DNA may determine whether you're an early bird or a night owl. Now, Richard, before we get started, where do you see yourself on the spectrum? Ooh, I do you don't see know. yourself as an early bird or a night owl? I when you know. wake up, I think this is the best determination. When you wake up, are you ready to go? Are you at your best right after you wake up? Yeah, usually, so for the past couple weeks, I wake up to an 815 conference call. And I wake up at like 810, and I'm on my conference call at 815. And you're like, I'm excited to be alive. Well, no, I mean, it's important. It's, I don't want to be on a conference call at 815. No, but I mean, when you wake up. So for me, I am certainly a night owl. That means that over the course of the day, for me, I get progressively more and more awake. And I reach my like peak alertness probably about six hours before I go to bed. So I reach my, I reach my peak alertness, like where I'm like crushing it, humming from about one to five. So you may not be a morning person. You're probably uh, an intermediary. Is there other such thing. things? Yeah, no, it's definitely not like, I mean, because I've known morning people and the, the way they describe it is they like wake up like a shot and they're ready to go. And then the day just gets progressively worse from there until, you know. I mean, I know people like, I mean, I've had bosses that are morning people. Like, you know, you get 10 emails from them at 6 a.m. in the morning. And I'm like. And you're like, why are you doing this to me? Exactly. <laughs> so there could be a scientific reason behind it. So these certain genetic variations occur significantly more frequently in people who self-identify as having an early to bed, early to rise lifestyle. So they found 15 different spots from nearly 89,000 people. And they saw these spots in the genetic script that it was likely to vary between morning people and evening people. So. Seven of these swaps occurred near genes involved in regulating a person's daily cycle or their circadian rhythm. So that makes sense. So they're basically saying that there are these 15 markers that they've isolated that tend to either be one way or the other, whether you are a morning person or a night owl. I think it makes perfect sense. No, right? I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. I, and I, I wonder if there's like a genetic, because I'm also people that like people, like I'm also people that can't dive into work right away. Not the office, but like work. Like even when I'm writing op-eds, like it takes me, 10, yeah. five to 10 minutes to like warm the engine up. And then once it's going, I'm humming. That could be three o'clock in the morning, but it's just like, all right, gotta go. Well, I mean, I think that that's a big problem. Like just with getting started with any work, I think sometimes like you, you do need to start, yeah. right? I mean, like the most important thing First pair is you have to start doing something. And for me, sometimes I might not want to work on one project, but I know that I have some mindless task that I need to do. I mean, we all have these tasks that like, we do frequently, I mean, maybe it's checking and responding to email, you know, maybe it's doing like something that you do uh, on the weekly, like, I mean, a perfect example is like getting the pictures for the Richard Fowler show is something I have to do every week. It doesn't require it's the like- the Richard Fowler show, it's a proper noun. what I call it? I'm joking, you did, I was just thought I would say interject that. The Richard Fowler show, not the Fowler show, Fowler show. Anyway, Whatever. that's a perfect example of one of those tasks, right? So I'm, I'm looking on the internet, I'm trying to find the right pictures, but it's not like, you know, writing a two-page op-ed or something like that that requires, exactly. like, peak creative functioning. And then once you do that task, then your brain's like, okay, I'm getting into it, I'm getting into it, so, what's next? I mean, I'm almost, like, I get that. I can't do, like, the mindless task. I just get distracted easily. So, like, when I'm writing a two-page op-ed, which I guess I do quite frequently at this rate. Uh, Check them out on Ebony, ebony.com, news and views, Richard Fowler. Uh, thanks for the so, thanks for the promo. Yep. Um, but I feel as though, like, you know, I got to get there, and I'll play around with the first paragraph, then I'll play around with the first paragraph, and I'll play around. Then sometimes I get the first paragraph, and then I write the second paragraph, and I write around to get right when I get to around like paragraph three or four, then I'm just like, yeah. Mm. And then and then it's over. Then you just finish the entire thing, and then it's try crush it. Yeah, and then the, and I you know the the paragraph I hate the most is the last paragraph because <laughs> it has to be like powerful, but yet you're like I've run out of I've run out of shit to say. Yeah. 